This episode was made possible thanks to generous supporters on Patreon. Guitar fellows, and welcome to another episode of Dr. Zerner's Guitar Lab. Do you struggle to achieve a well sounding vibrato? If so, this video is right for you because today I will show you how to cultivate it, so let's get started. The vibrato is probably the easiest way to spot the inexperienced guitar player and I think that the reason for that is that many teachers neglect this technique and they assume that the student will acquire it over time. Unfortunately this process takes way too long and you can hear guitarists who play for decades and still have a lousy vibrato. But before we dive into the proper techniques let's start with a little bit of historic background. The term vibrato comes from the Italian word vibrare, which means to vibrate. Sometimes the terms vibrato and tremolo are used interchangeably, since they both are used to describe some kind of oscillation. But uh, the difference is that the vibrato is actually deviation in pitch, whereas the tremolo is deviation in amplitude which is why the tremolo is commonly executed as a rapid repeating of the same note. That's also the reason why the device on the guitar that we use to make vibrato and generally change the pitch is called tremolo. Leopold Mozart says in 1756 in his Versuch eine grundliche Violinschule or a treatise on the fundamental principles of violin playing, there are performers who tremble consistently on each note as if they had the permanent fever. And he suggests that the vibrato should rather be executed on long notes and at the end of the phrase. Even though the vibrato appears more and more during the Romantic period, when it's been a subject of uh, wide dispute, it still remains a relative unpopular technique until the 1940s, when the Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra starts introducing it for the first time in their performance. First of all, there are two main types of vibrato. The first one is the Womibar vibrato, and the second one is the Finger vibrato. The main difference is that when you use the warming bar you actually change the pitch in both directions, up and down. Whereas the finger only alters the pitch upwards. The vibrato which is performed by the finger it's also two types, the classical vibrato, which is also called axial pitch shifting, and the bending vibrato, 
which is also called radial pitch shifting. The classical vibrato is a technique originating from the violin and later it got transferred to the guitar. It consists of moving your finger back and forth, thus creating a subtle pitch change. Despite the fact that this type of vibrato is mostly associated with classical guitar players, uh, it's also widely used by players like uh, Alan Holtzworth, Guthrie Govan, Ron Thal and many others. The bending is a technique which originates in the beginning of the 20th century uh, thanks to the blues guitar players who tried to mimic the portamento effect caused by the slide. Also known as bottleneck because it's been made by bottlenecks back then and its purpose is to resemble the traditional African instruments. Later it became popular also as a vibrato technique. Let's start with the most popular vibrato technique, the bending one. I see that many people tend to put too much force on the vibrato which causes it to go out of tune like Since this vibrato is actually a series of micro bendings, the way to solve this problem is to relax your hand, slow down and start paying attention on every micro bending and make sure that you always return to the original pitch. Another mistake that many people do is that they bend in both directions which uh, results in too small and inconsistent vibrato. So my advice would be just to pick up one direction which is comfortable to you and just stick to it. One more prominent case is the B vibrato, which many people do in their attempt to sound more dramatic. But the truth is that it's rather annoying. I know that there are many well-known guitar players who have quite fast vibrato like Steve Morse, but if you pay attention to his vibrato, you will see that it's actually not so needlessly rapid, but uh, it's well measured, rhythmic and with a smooth flow, which leads me to uh, my personal understanding of uh, how the best vibrato should sound. And it should flow naturally, has proper rhythmics and a consistent range. For that purpose, we need to start doing the vibrato by the hand and not by the finger, like many people do in the beginning. The second step is to start practicing your vibrato with a metronome and gradually increasing the speed, but not by increasing the tempo, but starting to play shorter and shorter note lengths, like start with eight notes, then triplets, and so forth. This is a very important step because uh, in many cases in your playing you will need to speed up the vibrato to achieve more dramatic expression and um, no matter how fast the vibrato is, it always sounds good when it's rhythmically locked to the beat of the song. You can achieve that by learning to switch back and forth from different note lengths like switching from eight notes to triplets, from triplets to sixteenths, and vice versa. In such a way you will develop great control over your vibrato and it will never sound amateur. The easiest way is to start on around the twelfth fret on the third string because this is where you will get the least amount of tension of the whole guitar, therefore it's easy to have a good control and I suggest you to do it with every finger in order to achieve consistency. I personally prefer to bend downwards because it's more natural to the hand because the hand is designed to grip tightly not to ungrip tightly. Of course on the second and the first string it doesn't work because you will uh, get the stivai effect of getting that string out of the neck. So uh, on these two strings you can practice uh, the vibrato with uh, bending upwards. The classical vibrato is a little bit uh, easier to execute but there is one small catch. On instruments like violin, uh, the further you go on the neck the higher the pitch. 
on the guitar. However, being a fretted instrument, if you move your finger the same way, the pitch actually gets higher when you go back on the fret. The reason for that is that when you press just before the fret, uh, it's the most efficient way to produce a good tone with minimum effort because the distribution of the force. But when you move backwards and you apply the same type of pressure, it's very easy to bend the string and therefore rise the pitch. It's a bit counterintuitive, but uh, you don't need to think about it as long as you execute the motion properly. The trick is to relax your hand and to roll your finger on the string back and forth and of course practice it with a metronome to achieve a precise timing. The vibrato produced by the warming bar has its own specifics depending on the type of tremolo that you have. Nevertheless, there is a general guideline uh, which will help you to achieve a well-sounding vibrato with a warming bar. I see that uh, some people try to do a vibrato by the warming bar by gripping it very tight and pushing back and forth and hoping for the best. Unfortunately, this is not a good strategy because it leads to the same effect as the B vibrato. To avoid this problem, just hold the arm loosely and make circular motions like you scramble eggs. Then, of course, turn on the metronome and practice like every other type of vibrato. I personally prefer to combine the classical and the bending approach, which makes the vibrato oscillate smoother and more beautifully. I developed this approach by analyzing the vibrato of two of my guitar heroes, Ingvi Molstein and Steve Vai, because they both have outstanding vibrato. And I figure out that they both do tiny circles when they do a vibrato. For example, like uh, the beginning of this video, which is uh, a song by Infi Mosting Brothers, which I also made a cover of it. You can watch it up here. very popular track by Steve Vai. This technique combines both the radial pitch shift and the axial pitch shift. And by doing circles you make a very smooth transition between the two techniques and this is how the pitch changes in a very nice flow and this is what creates uh, what I call the 3D vibrato. Of course having a scalloped neck greatly contributes to this technique but it's perfectly doable on a regular fretboard as well. Today's exercise for you is to practice the three types of vibrato or just the two finger types if you don't have a tremolo and play them with a metronome which you can set on 72 and then start by playing it on 8 notes. Then switch to triplets. then move to 16 notes then quintuplets and then sextuplets If you wish, you can go even higher if this is your goal, but if not, six tuplets are completely enough to develop a good and well-sounding vibrato. So that's everything for today's episode. I hope you find this video useful. 
Thank you very much for watching and if you like what I do, consider supporting me on Patreon up here and on the links down in the description where you will get access to all kinds of interesting stuff for as low as $3 per month. Also subscribe to my channel and click that bell button to get informed when I upload new video. See you next time and remember, practice makes perfect.